Are you guys ready to install the M.2 card in the Gigabyte TRX40 designator motherboard? We are too. Now what's exciting about this is this card comes with this motherboard. There are two add-in cards in here. One, the M.2 card, and two, the Thunderbolt 3 card. When we get through with this card, we're going to do the other card. And what we want to do is a comparison of the card that comes in this box with buying this card separately. It's curious to note that the I.O. card, the M.2 card, came out about a week before the motherboard came out. So that's how we ended up with that. Uh, but I want to take a look at it and compare and see if there's any differences. Because there's actually four versions of this card out. You can buy it one this way or two you can buy it separately. If you buy it separately there's three versions of it. Actually four if you can find them. One, this same card by itself which is what this is supposed to be in the box. The other three are all have memory on them. And of those three that have memory one of them has LEDs on it. It's probably the one that has the least amount of memory on it so if the LEDs are a big deal to you, you can buy the card, pull the memory out, and put your own drives in it. Now what you want to keep in mind is these cards are made for high-end desktops. This is as high-end desktop as we can get right now with the TRX40 motherboard. Generically, these should work on any X299, X399, TRX40, or even the X570. Now for those of you with an X570 chipset that want to put one of these cards in your machine, keep in mind your PCI Express resources. You have one 16-lane PCI Express slot. And I'll look at that as we look at this motherboard and show you what I'm talking about for resources. Because on this board I have two 16-lane slots and two 8-lane slots. But on the X570 chipset you have one 16-lane slot. They may all look like 16 lanes mechanically, but only one is 16 lane electrically. So where you would normally put your video card, that's where you'd put this card. And you have to bifurcate it, which your BIOS can do. So on the X570 chipset, if you're brave enough to do that, and you don't mind your video card being in an eight lane slot, go for it. What we want to do is we're going to go overhead as we pull this out, because I want to compare this card with a card that's separate by itself. Y'all ready? Now as we do the unboxing, which is kind of what this is, we have a Thunderbolt card on one side, and then we have the M.2 card on this side. It's got plastic on the front. It's got a film of plastic on the back, so we'll need to pull that off. What I'm looking for are any, if, any differentiating marks or anything that's uh, cause for concern or something I need to be aware of. I'm looking for a power tap. It does not have one, so it's going to draw all the power from the bus. So we need to remember when we plug this card in, we have the PEG connector plugged in. And as we go through this, we're going to be looking at the product, the technology. We'll get into the requirements, what this will take. And as we do the installation, we will look at and talk about RAID a little bit on the way. But we're not going to do RAID, I'm just saying. There's also some stats we want to share with you, which I think are fascinating. We'll do a summation of chipsets. And as far as results for a comparison, that's going to be a separate video because we have several of these quad cards to look at. And quad cards generically means four drives. Uh, there's a two-drive card that's worth looking at made by Supermicro, but if you've got the resources and you can put a card in, you're better off with a quad card. But I'm just saying it's available. Uh, we've looked at cards that, um, well, as the technology goes, there's two-drive cards, four-drive cards, which is the majority of the market. There's one six-drive card, and there's also an eight-drive card. We might, we might look at that. Uh, I'll tell you about it later when it's appropriate. So first thing we want to do is compare this card to the retail card and see what the differences are. So let's go overhead. So no power tap, plastic that needs to be pulled off. So on the bracket end, if you'll notice, we've only got LEDs, but LEDs are nice. One, two, three, and four, so we'll be able to see drive activity on those LED lights. Good to know. Now let's compare the two cards. So we'll pull that out, set it aside. I want to be sure and pull that film off of it. That just peels right off. Film on the back, film on the front, little tab here to pull that off with. You know, this is strange, all this stuff with film on it. Even the memory had film we had to pull off. That was kind of weird. But to protect it, keep it looking pretty so it doesn't get scratched up. I get that. Okay, so we've got one card, and we have the second card to take a look at. So we'll pull this box off. So on the left, this is the card that comes with the motherboard. This is the card that, comes, that can be purchased separately. And this one became available before this one did. Manual for the model number. What we're going to do is overlay the two cards and do a more direct comparison. Then I'll get the card out and take a look at it. Now these appear to be the same, but I wanted to verify. I'm also curious to get my hands on one of the other cards and see what the PCB is on those. And as you'll notice, we look at the part number. 
Gigabyte GC4 XM2 G4 Rev 1. Same thing here. GC4 XM2 G4 Rev 1.0. So technically these two cards look like they're the same. I just like to know. We're going to go a little bit further and uh, we're going to look for a power tap. We'll look at the LEDs and see if there's anything else. That There might be something different. I just like to know. I like to be thorough. So as we know on this card, no power tap. We'll pull this card out. It has plastic on the front that needs to be taken off. Oddly enough, there is no film on the back. There is a serial number sticker. No power tap. Looks like the same type fan. Yep, no, no connections on this edge. And both cards have the same LEDs, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Technically, these cards are the same. I just want to check and verify. Now I'm real curious about the other cards, of which there are three. I'd like to get one of the others that has memory on it, uh, see what the differences are. Should be the same card functionally, but I'm, I'm curious. You know what they say, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So this card, we're going to set this card aside. We'll have it to look at later. Now, first question is, okay, we're going to put a card in the machine. Can I put two of these in a machine? Absolutely. But remember, because of resource allocation, you've got two 16-lane slots and two 8-lane slots. So both of these would require a 16-lane slot. That leaves the video card for an 8-lane slot. If you can live with that, yeah, you could put two of these in a machine. So on this motherboard, with uh, four drives on the motherboard and four drives on this card, that's eight drives. Man, that's a lot. That's just, that's wild. But if you want to do it, it's, it's possible. Now the next question is chipset. This technology came about with the workstations about two years ago. Right now this is 2020. And it has trickled down to the high-end desktop. Now, what's a high-end desktop? Specifically classified X299, X399, TRX40, and the X570. So if you've got an X570, you can put one of these cards in your machine. How's that going to work? You've got one 16-lane slot. Now, you may have three or four slots that are 16 lane mechanically, but you've only got one 16 lane slot electrically. That would be the first slot. And the X570 chipset can handle one of these bifurcated. Now, PCI Express 4, it's supposed to be automatic. If we have a problem, when we go to the BIOS, we'll see the controller, uh, excuse me, we'll see, we'll see the drives on the controller. If we don't, then we need to go into the BIOS while we're there and manually set it. Uh, because the BIOS is beta, we'll see. But that's the way it's supposed to happen. On PCI Express 3, it had to be set manually, which means the slot had to be bifurcated. So the first thing we saw, this came down from the workstation two years ago. The second thing we saw was bifurcation. Bifurcation can be done two ways. Like this is done where the bifurcation is on the motherboard, or if you have a card that's bifurcated. Now, two brands that come to mind that are bifurcated cards, and that means they have a PLX chip. What's a PLX chip? That's like a, um, a multiplexer chip that does the signal divisions so that each drive gets four lanes each for 16 lanes total. Those cards are about three times the price of a card like this. So this is about a $127 card. Those are about a $300, $350 card. Uh, Glowtrends makes a couple of them. We've got a video up on the Glowtrends card you can take a look at. It requires an eight-lane slot, but it doesn't have to be bifurcated. It does the bifurcation. There's also, uh, and they have one that requires a 16-lane slot. High Point is one that we've recommended a lot. They have a new one for PCI Express 4.0 that to me is kind of uh, an oxymoron because if you've got PCI Express 4, you've got bifurcation. But High Point has come out with a PCI Express version 4 card that has bifurcation on the card, and they do that with the chip. I believe the chipset is a Broadcom chip. We'll get more into that about later. But they've also got a card coming out that it takes eight drives. Same chip, it's the way the chip's program, still requires one 16 lane slot. So, expensive? I can imagine. That's, that's um, based on what these are costing, that's probably pushing about a thousand dollars for that card. That'd be my guess. Because uh, if the regular card is around four hundred dollars, I would expect the other one to be seven hundred fifty to eight hundred dollars, maybe more. I don't know. I haven't seen anything more than the specs on it and I stumbled into it when I found it. And uh, I was talking to High Point about the card they wanted to talk about it, and they said everybody's gun ho with the X570 chipset. And I said, you got to be kidding. Why would anybody want to put one of these on the X570 chipset? Now, you can. It's doable. But you've got one 16-lane slot on the X570. So if you put that on that motherboard, your video card's in an 8-lane slot. If you understand that and you can do that you want to, more power to you. 
But with this, we've got one 16 lane slot for the video card. We got one 16 lane slot for this card. Now, can I put two of these in a machine? Absolutely, but you're facing the same thing. We've got two 16 lane slots and two eight lane slots. So we got the same thing the X570 has. If the X570 puts one of these in the system, video goes in the eight lane slot. If we put two of these on the TRX40, or even if we put two of these in the X399, where does the video card go? In an eight lane slot. So there's a way to do it, but you gotta, you gotta know your lanes. You gotta know your resources. I, I remember when we used to deal with IRQs and that was a big deal. I remember when we dealt with UARTs. So that's kind of where we're at right now with uh, PCI Express resources. It's gonna get better and get smarter. I already see it happening with PCI Express 4. It's supposed to be automatic. We're gonna find out when we get into the BIOS. So what's required to install one of these cards in the machine? One 16 lane slot. The other feature that's called bifurcation, your chipset has to be able to bifurcate. Now, will this card work in somebody else's motherboard with a different chipset? That depends. The first qualifier, if it's ASUS, probably. ASUS has a long FAQ on these. As, uh, as one user said, Gil, I'm sure you've probably helped a billion people with that. I said, well, yeah, I have. I hope to help a billion more because if you guys ask me, will this work on my chipset, I'll take a look. Now, I had one user contact us on LinkedIn and he wanted to do a BIOS mod. I said, wow, you can, I wouldn't advise it. Why? You can brick a motherboard with a bad BIOS, even for the BIOS that's made for that board. So if you get a BIOS from somebody else that's modded that BIOS, they'll tell you the same thing. You travel at your own risk. If you brick it, it's on you. So if you've got a chipset that does not support bifurcation, this goes back two years, it's possible if someone's willing to do the mod. But you got to remember, to have that available, something has to be taken away for that resource to be released, for it to be allocated to one of these cards. So it's doable, but if the technology is not already there, I don't advise it. But I know one guy that did it. I'm just saying. So this other card, we know they're both the same, so we're going to set this one aside. Now, how much memory can we put on this card? As much or as little as you want. When we did the ASUS quad card, at the time, what we were doing was proof of concept. So people were questioning, some people questioned, why did you put 500 gig drives on that card? Because they're expensive. We're showing proof of concept and we were gonna use them on only other cards. Well, as I say, go big or go home. We're gonna put something a little bit bigger in here. But again, it's proof of concept. So what you're gonna see is we're gonna put this card in to try it, but that doesn't mean it's gonna stay that way. You can put, and we suggest all four drives be the same. That's what the manufacturers say. But you got to remember, when RAID started, RAID was about redundant array of independent disks. And it was for spinning drives, and it was on SCSI. And that's how we came up with Hot Plug, Hot Swap. That was originally that if you had RAID, where you had it configured, where you had it striped and mirrored, you could take one drive, pull it out. The RAID did not come down. You could put another drive in. It would rebuild, and it would keep going. Well, RAID has evolved. We got with AHCI, with SATA AHCI, the ability to hot swap a drive. And now with NVMe drives, they can be hot swapped, but it's a different card and a different configuration with a different rack to do that with. We might do a video on that sometime if you guys are interested. But uh, that's where all that came down was it's a workstation server technology that we now have on the desktop. So we're gonna put some memory on this and see what we've got. So there's going to be a little bit of an unboxing because I've got to go on an Easter egg hunt. We have a Seagate, so we're going to do an unboxing and see what's in this one. I think there's another Seagate drive. We're going to find out. There's been a lot of things going on, so, yep, there's another Seagate drive. So that's two Seagate drives. That's stuff for another video. And this box, I think, is the one that we're looking for that has. Now, which drive would you get? Keep in mind, PCI Express 3.0 and PCI Express 4.0. These cards will work in either one. They're backwards compatible. The drives, same thing. If you put PCI Express 3.0 drives on the card, it will work. If you want to put PCI Express 4.0 drives on the card, it will work. Backwards compatible. And you can put version 1 PCI Express 4.0, or by the time you see this video, the new drives for PCI Express 4.0 call it version 2 will be out. They'll be faster, a whole lot faster. How much faster? About twice the speed of an NVMe drive on PCI Express 3.0. That's fast. And NVMe is as fast as you can get. I'm just saying. So let's see what we've got in the box. We have a bag in the box. 
I'm expecting to see four drives in here. We're going to find out. Yep, we have. And these are Sabret. Let's go overhead. Okay, we have one, two, three, and four. So we've got four Sabret drives. These are the Rocket NVMe 4.0. So these are PCI Express 4.0, the first version. And these are all two terabyte drives. We have four of those. We also have two of the two terabyte Seagate drives. Again, these are PCI Express 4.0, first generation. If we were to get a chance to take a look at, say, like the high point card that requires eight drives, uh, we might do a mixed environment with four Sabrent and uh, four Seagate. That means I only need to get two more Seagate. Or we pull off another machine. Uh, the advantage of, they need to all be the same, but the advantage of doing them different is if I put two in one RAID and two in another RAID, it's easier to identify the drives by name for the presentation. So, clarity, so you know what I'm talking about. So we're going to take these four drives and put them on this card. These two we'll save for later. Now, how do we end up with two of these? One of these was supposed to be for one machine. One of these was supposed to be for another machine. And the machine that this was going to go in was the TRX-40 Designare, which we ended up upgrading to a Sabrent 4 terabyte. And we used the endoscope to get in there and look at that. So hope you'll take a look at it. So we'll save these for something else. Perfectly good drives, but they're first generation. And uh, drives right now are supposed to be a pretty good price. So take a look, see which one's the best bang for the buck for you, and then uh, proceed accordingly. So what we need to do... We need to get this open so we can uh, put some memory on it. Let's populate. We'll turn this over. And we've got six screws we need to take out. And you will need a micro screwdriver for these. Now what we're going to do for the simple installation is we will go into the BIOS, take a look at this, make sure it's recognized. We'll double check. I'll show you the BIOS version we're using. Windows 10 Pro, build 2004. And I think the specificity is, is necessary. So if you're having issues and if you have any questions, we would need to know that same information. Anything prior to that, just like the BIOS, uh, might be some problems. And we'll look at the BIOS version that we're running and we'll make note of that. It's interesting on this card, the screws that they use have a larger head than other cards that we've uh, experienced. I like that. It's a small screw with a small thread and a small insert for the Phillips screwdriver, but it's got a large head, large surface area. I like that. So let's take this off. Oh, wow. All I did was take off the heat sink. Yeah. So we'll take this, turn it around, flip it over, actually. Now, we we'll want to be sure and peel this film off because that's one giant thermal pad. And even though we're peeling this off this thermal pad, I'm leaving the labels on the drives because, remember, I may be changing out the drives. So for those of you that recommend taking the labels off the drives for better connectivity, conductivity of heat, that's your business, and I want you to understand why we're not doing that. So we have a thermal pad. If you'll notice, there's a thermal pad on this heat sink, and we'll peel that cover off as we put it on. And there's also a thermal pad on the card, which is new. I haven't seen that before, and we'll want to be sure and peel that off as well. So now we need to get the drives out of the boxes. We took a look at all the different drives and trying to decide which ones we wanted to go with. And at the time we were watching, we thought we'd get some gigabyte drives, but... They were just too expensive. Uh, we looked at the Corsair drives. They disappeared really, really quick. Um, the price was reasonable, but we weren't, we weren't moving fast enough. So we were looking, deciding whether to go to the Seagate or whether to go with the uh, Sabrent. We went with Sabrent. So this machine is all Sabrent drives. Didn't plan it that way. It just ended up that way. Now, they also include a copy of Acronis in here. I got to tell you, I do not care for the Acronis software. Why? Well, as we've talked about before in the live meeting, when you put a Cronus on your machine, it kind of takes over your machine. And it's hard to get rid of. So uh, unless you're prepared to deal with that, don't install a Cronus. There's other programs out there we've talked about for cloning imaging and backup. Personal preference. We have a history. People with a Cronus are nice people, but uh, don't care for their software. You can't uninstall it. Why is that important? There's a driver that installs in Device Manager. That driver is always there. There's no way to get it out once you put it in. It's not just simply a matter of uninstalling the software. And forget trying to manually un uninstall it. It won't happen. Unless you use an uninstaller that's watching the drive when you do the installation, there's no way to completely uninstall their software. And from my experience, nothing they tell you to do will work. None of it. So, been there, done that. Your mileage may vary. Our favorite has been Macrium Reflect. We've had good luck with that. Uh, we used to use ESIS. It was a good program until we had some problems with it. And there was a uh, 
a Linux program that we liked that was pretty good, that was great. But the problem with it, the way it saw the display, if you had a 4K display, the fonts were so small, you couldn't see it with a magnifying glass. So that didn't work out too well on a 4K laptop. We found that, we found out about that the hard way. I believe it was called Clonezilla. Great program on a regular laptop, but not with a 4K display. Couldn't see it. When I was talking to High Point about drives, they wanted to know the specs of the machine that we were going to test the card in. Because I told them, I said, well, I don't want to look at it now, but in about 30 days. They said, well, everybody right now is testing these on the uh, X570 chipset. I said, these cards are not made for the X570 chipset. I said, I know it'll work, but these are made for high-end desktops. The X570 is not a high-end desktop. I said, when we test it, we'll test it on a TRX40. They said, well, what drives are you going to use? I said, probably Sabrent. We've got some Seagate. I said, oh, Sabrent, that's... Uh, one of those repackaging companies. I said, well, a lot of people are using Sabrent. We've had some questions about Sabrent, so we're going to try Sabrent. He said, well, we'll have to test those and see if they work. I said, well, we'll test them for you, so we'll see what happens. We're not interested in making anybody look bad. We just want to know, does it work? We like to keep things simple. Okay. I like these little boxes they put these in. Now, what's neat about the uh, Sabrent drives, they've also got their own little pad that they include. So I'll flip that over. And this ought to be fun. Now what's nice, if you'll notice the, uh, get this where we can see this center. Now that we've got this cover off, we do have a couple of switches here that we can change. This is our first time to look at this card, so we're seeing it fresh like you, and I think that perspective is better so that we're all on the same page. We discover as we go. That's part of an unboxing, and that's kind of what this is. I didn't want to look at it. I have a little experience ahead of time when I do the Thunderbolt 3, but... Uh, I'm just saying, and I've got some experience doing these cards, but this is the first time I've looked at the Gigabyte card, so we want to look and examine everything, because I think everything matters. So right now, the screws are already set at the point where we need them for the 2280, which most all of these drives are 2280. And if you'll notice, we've got connectors, and they're numbered. Let's see if we can get a close-up on those connectors. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Right up there is number four. Right there is number three. There's number two and number one. So they go from the bottom up. So now the reason this is important, I have read where some people have bought this card separately by itself, like on Amazon, and they said the card wouldn't work. They only saw one drive. Well, the one drive they saw was that first drive, M.2 underscore one. And the reason they only saw one is because the slot wasn't bifurcated for whatever reason, uh, without knowing the specifics. Now, one person said they did try to put this in a Gigabyte TRX40 motherboard, and I believe it was a designator, which tells me, one, I need to know what version BIOS they were running. And two, did they double check bifurcation in the BIOS? Even though it's PCI Express 4, depending on the BIOS version they were running, they might not have been bifurcated, which means they need to have manually set it. Uh, the motherboard that we got, this, this Revision 1 motherboard, had version 2 of the BIOS. It was buggy, but we were able to get Windows installed. And the next revision of the motherboard, BIOS was a little weird, couldn't do anything with it. The third revision of the motherboard BIOS, and I'll show you what that number is when we get the system up and running, uh, has been bulletproof. The latest version as of right now, and this is uh, 9.22.2020, the latest version is not a BIOS you want to use. We'll take a look at what it is. Also note the designation of the numbers in the BIOS number. That last letter is a lowercase. Lowercase denotes in the BIOS that it's beta. You don't want to use that last BIOS right now. It causes all kinds of problems. Uh, We'll get into that maybe some other time. Let's get back to the card. But I, but I wanted to make a point about the BIOS specific that we're going to be using for this card. And, and if you have problems, what you need to look for. Number one, the BIOS. What version are you using? Number two, are all the drives recognized in the BIOS? Because if the BIOS doesn't see the drives, the operating system's not going to see them. Now, for those of you that, and I read also where someone said, well, I bought some drives. The BIOS sees them, but Windows doesn't see them. Okay, my first question is, are you sure those were brand new drives? Because the problems that people were talking about, and I saw two of them, if you buy a drive and somebody has monkeyed with it, messed with it, used it, put it back in a box and sent it back, it could have been formatted in a different operating system like Linux. So there's two different tools. If Windows can't see that drive, but the BIOS does, that you have to use. One of them is many tools. Uh, I'll put a link up to it. The other one is just booting the machine with uh, a version of uh, Linux and uh, taking a look at the drive and uh, reformatting them and then they'll pop up in Windows. So those things happen but you have to be aware and understand that you know here's the process and here's why. So 
Let's go back to the drive. So now that we know the designation of the drives, which is from the bottom up for one, two, three, and four, I'm going to go ahead and peel this film off, which is a protective cover, which is kind of cool. We'll set that aside and we'll start with our first drive. And again, we're leaving our labels on. So I'm going to need to pull my screws off where those drives are going to sit. And I'll start at the bottom. That's pretty neat. So when we get this all configured and we get these installed, what kind of RAID are we going to do? The kind of RAID that most people want, capacity, which means we're going to be flying at the seat of the pants, which brings up another point about RAID. If you decide to do RAID, which we're not going to do, but if you decide to do RAID, data needs to exist in three places. There's two ways to do RAID with one of these cards. One in the BIOS, which is a hybrid RAID. The other way is with software, which is done in the operating system, which is Windows. It's a slower RAID, it's a safer RAID. The hybrid RAID is a bootable RAID. The software RAID is not bootable. But this BIOS RAID can go poof and disappear. So data needs to exist in three places and be prepared. So that's why the way we would use this would be as a scratch drive for rendering. Uh, if you're doing virtual machines, whew, get the biggest NVMe drive you can get your hands on. I would not do those in RAID because again, if you do a hardware RAID, it can go poof. If you really want to do RAID, do the operating system RAID and uh, set them that way. But I, I wouldn't use virtual instruments on a setup like this. It's too flecky. There's a third way to do RAID. This card cannot, and that's a pure hardware RAID. If this were a hardware RAID, it would have a jumper on the end of it where we could set it for 0, 1, 5, 10, whatever. Um, for what you get for the money for what it is, it is what it is. All we're going to do is a simple installation. We're going to put the drives on. We're going to look in the BIOS, make sure it's configured, make sure it's seen. We're going to go into the operating system. If the drives are seen, then we'll go into disk management and we'll do two things. One, we'll initialize the drives because they're brand new. I've seen that tons of times where people say, I can't see my drive. What's wrong with it? Well, one, you have to initialize it. And two, then you format it. Then you got a drive. So the way we're going to do this, we'll have four drive letters on that card. That'll be the simple installation. That's what we're going to do. Ready? So 2280, there's the first drive. We'll go ahead and put the screw down to it. Drive one. And I'm going to take good care of the packaging that came with these drives because, uh, again, you know, when I pull the drives out, I need a home for them. I need some place to put them. I don't want them just sitting around in a any static bag, which vendors don't supply to us anymore. And so now we go with drive number four. Good advertisement for Sabrent, wouldn't you say? Didn't plan it. just worked out that way. We get finished with all this. We'll do a recap. Okay, four drives. Okay, one, two, three, and four. Now we need to take this other film off and put our sandwich back together. Get everything lined up on the bottom. I wonder why that was so heavy. That looks like copper. That is. I believe that is copper. I expected that to be aluminum. That's a copper heat sink. Interesting. I'm impressed. If you notice on these standoffs, they stand up. So those will go in the appropriate holes right here to reach the other side for the back plate. So those will drop down in there. So let's put that back on. Reassemble our sandwich. Yep, that side's lined up. Dropped right in. You can see them right there. Then all I have to do is just put this right back over it. Line them up. And if you'll notice, the center screws are offset. So if you put this, try to put this on backwards, you can't. I've got screws on the ends. And then this set here that's off center. Now what I'll do is get the first screw started. And I'm not going to... Uh, drive them home. In other words, drive them all the way in until I'm finished. I just want to get them lined up. So I'm going corner to corner for alignment. You want to be sure and keep track of those screws because if you lose one, there's no extras. That would be a real bummer. I'm curious now to look at the uh, ASUS card because as we stated, Gigabyte has four of these even though they were not the first to market. They weren't even the second to market. Their first set of cards nobody ever saw and they didn't see the light of day. They were more like engineering samples, but when they came out, they came out quick. So to reiterate, Gigabyte has four cards, Asus has three, ASRock has two, and the ASRock, one is PCI Express 3 and the other is PCI Express 4. MSI looks like has two cards, but again, MSI, you've got to buy their card with their motherboard. They have two, one for PCI Express 3, and looks like they have one for PCI Express 4. Uh, the original MSI card on PCI Express 3 looked like a little video card. It was beautiful. I'd love to have had one of those to have looked at and tested, but again, you'd have to have the motherboard or find someone that didn't want the card and separate it from the motherboard. So we have the Gigabyte. 
we have the ASUS, we have the ASRock. And we're going to look at those and do a test comparison. Right now, we just want to get this one installed. When you think about it, there's a lot of technology here going on, and uh, we shouldn't take any of this for granted because it's, it's, it's amazing that we can do this. But you got to make sure you meet all the requirements. And I think a lot of people get confused about the specs. It's pretty straightforward. You've got to have one 16-lane slot, and then you have to have bifurcated. It should be bifurcated automatically with PCI Express 4, but if it is not, then we'll do like PCI Express 3 and we'll manually bifurcate it, which means we'll reassign the lanes. And that lane assignment is from 16 to about 4, 4, 4, and 4. So, card is assembled. Screws are down good. We'll set that aside. Now we'll get the case up, get it in. Okay, now we're ready to put the card in the machine. So what we want to do is look at the slots, look at lane assignments, and uh, look at what our PCI Express resources are. 16 lane, 8 lane slot, so forth. Let's go overhead. Okay, on the TRX-40 designated motherboard, Two 16-lane slots, two 8-lane slots. So that's the 16-lane slot. That's where that card will go. And then, of course, we'll go to the BIOS, see what's going on, and get that set up. Now, the last two slots, both of those slots, those last two slots are supposed to be 8-lane slots. When we get to the Thunderbolt 3 card, the Thunderbolt 3 only takes four lanes. We should be able to go into either slot. But because of the issue with the BIOS, we will only be able to go in one slot. I'm just saying that's the way it is until I get that sorted out. But for what we're doing right now, this should work. Is it going to work? I have no idea. We're going to find out. So knowing the slot we're going for, we need to pull the cover off, which should be right here. Pull the I.O. panel out. And for those that don't like the layout of my cables, I understand. Don't worry about it. It won't bother me because things change in these computers. None of this, as far as I'm concerned, is permanent. Card is in the slot. We're going to secure it. Okay, we're in. Now, everything's good to go. The only thing we need to do now we need to get our cables on the back plugged in. So first thing I'll do is keyboard and mouse. Then we'll plug in the network because I'm going to go out and take a look. All this is part of the process of testing. And yes, I'm plugging in up there where those DACs are at. Doesn't bother me a bit. Now, when we do the Pro Audio interfaces on here, we've got one that'll be USB and we've got two that are going to be Thunderbolt 3. That should be interesting. Keyboard and mouse, network. Last but not least is power. Now, I have the power switch off. I like to have it off because I don't want to plug this in and energize. I want to plug it in first, then energize by flipping the switch. Then I will turn power on. And as the system comes up, once I have something on screen, we'll go into the BIOS. You guys ready? I'm going to flip this over so you can see the lights. Now, while we're waiting on this thing to boot, I think it's important to note that there uh, are 14 TRX-40 motherboards. Of those 14, only five include some version of an M.2 quad card. And uh, of those five, only one out of all those motherboards has two add-in cards. One, an M.2 card, and two, a Thunderbolt 3 card. That's this motherboard. That's pretty curious. And as we've reiterated before for chipsets, this will work with the X299 and the X399. It also works with the TRX40 and the X570. And why do I make that delineation? X299 and X399 are PCI Express 3. Whereas if you go TRX40 or X570, you're PCI Express 4.0. So this card will work on any of those machines. So that's just kind of something to be aware of. Right now we're uh, waiting to get into the BIOS and the system is still going through the process. It hadn't booted yet. So whatever it's doing, we may have to uh, shut it off, boot it again. Now what we're gonna do while we're still waiting on this thing to boot, Hopefully it's going to boot. I'm going to go to Gigabyte's website, and we're going to take a look at the BIOS version so I can show you where we're at with this. And we are on Gigabyte's site for the TRX40 Designare, Revision 1. We've clicked on Support. We're going to click on uh, BIOS, and there are four BIOS versions. Now, our motherboard that we have that we're using shipped with the F2 BIOS. We have stepped through with the F3 and with the F4C. And we are now running F4C. F4K is not stable. We're not going to use that. So we are right now on F4C, and it's lowercase c. It's a beta BIOS. We're waiting on this machine to boot. If it doesn't boot, we've got to pull the card out and figure out what's wrong, which means it doesn't like that BIOS. That's what we're trying to figure out. So what I'm going to do now is uh, download the manual. So we're on F4C for the BIOS. And they don't tell you a whole lot, just about the uh, updating the uh, GISA code which is the uh, microcode in the processor. Sometimes you'll get compatibility with things like memory or whatever, but they don't give us the uh, notes and details like they used to. So we're going to go back up here to uh, downloads, 
and we're going to go to manual and we're going to pull down the manual we want to get the manual not just for raid we want the manual the complete manual and we will save that to the hard drive and we're going to do a search on m.2 aic let's see what we get so we'll do a search for m.2 gigabyte m.2 card and there it is aorus generation 4 aic adapter which is the same one as the GC-4X M2G4. So let's see what we get. That's the card. We'll go to specifications. Talks about the four LEDs, four drives, 16 lane slot. And of course, if it's put in an eight lane slot, you'd only see two drives, which would be M1 and M2. So we'll go to support. And what we're looking for is the, uh, there's the Aura storage manager. I'd like to find the manual. So we'll click on manual and we're looking at, we're gonna download both of these, the FAQ, and we'll pull down also the regular manual, see what we get. And letter C for the switches. Okay, this is key to know. Okay, if you want to install more than one adapter card, make sure to follow the table below to set the address priority for each card. First card, second card, third card. So we didn't touch the jumpers, we left them by default for one card, which is uh, one card, first card, both switches are turned on. Uh, we can, however, take a look at this card. We'd have to take the lid off of it. Not going to do that. I'm still waiting for this to boot, and uh, it hasn't finished the boot process. So what I'm going to do is turn this off, turn it back on, see if it'll come up, because it can't finish the boot process. We've got AA on the codes, so we're going to turn it off and try to reboot it and see what happens. Hold down the power button, power off. I'm going to turn the switch off. I'm going to drain the power just to make certain power is drained. I'll turn it back on. We'll see if we can get into the BIOS. What we may have to do is pull the card out and go into the BIOS and set that slot manually. That's kind of what I think is going on, but we're going to find out. Troubleshooting is how you learn, but knowing what's going on, that's part of the process. So power, let's see what we got, if it'll come back this time. So to reiterate, if it does not come back up this time, we'll go in, turn it off again, kill the power, pull the card out, bring the machine back up, go into the BIOS, and manually set that slot and see if that solves it. Okay, I heard the post. Now, right after we hear that beep and post, I should be seeing something on the monitor. I get nothing. I'm watching the codes on the BIOS. I get to AA and it stops, so it's hanging. So we're gonna need to pull the card out and see if we can go in and manually configure that card, see if that does the job. Like I said, it's a beta BIOS. That's why we're building a foundation, because we know everything's solid. The only thing we've changed is that card. Yeah, it's not gonna come back up. So we're gonna turn it off. Kill the power. I need to suit up again. Get my cartoon gloves on. Anti-static gloves. Get my strap on. ESD is our enemy. We've come too far and have too much invested in this to worry about electrostatic discharge. Okay, we've drained the power. Power supply is off. Check that button one more time. We're going to pull the card out so we can get into the BIOS and see if we can manually configure that and tell that slot to bifurcate. Well, talk about doing dumb things it happens to the best of us. Got my gloves on. Got my strap on. I put the card back in a box. You know when you're plugging stuff in and unplugging stuff, you got to remember to plug everything in. I uh, had my uh, keyboard and mouse, had the uh, network connected, had the power supply connected. Well, you can't see nothing on the monitor if you don't have the monitor plugged in. So, uh, wow. Happens to the best of us. How did I realize it? Well, I kept looking at the video card and I noticed that the fans weren't running. I thought, well, I didn't remember that before. So I got to looking and I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, beam me up, Scotty. So this time we're gonna plug the monitor in. HDMI video plugged in. So power back and plugged. Power supply energized. Let's energize, powering up. Now, this time when I see something on the screen, once I hear the beep, we'll go into the BIOS. In the meantime, if you wanna take a look at that and see how that's all running. Video cards installed, M.2 cards installed. Two 16 lane slots, there was a beep. We should see something on the screen. As soon as I see it, I'll take you in. I'm waiting, yep. And we are in the BIOS. It's supposed to be. Voila. Okay, we are in the BIOS. What we want to do is very simple and straightforward. We're looking for the card. And we see boot sequence. So I'm going to look at M.2. We see the 4. We'll see the PCI Express right there. PCI Express 4.0 by 4 at 4.0 by 4. So if you notice, PCI Express by 16 underscore 1. PCI Express by 16 underscore 2 and that card is automatically recognized. So we see the video card and we see the M.2 card. Now it's automatically recognized and, it, and it's allocated the resource accordingly. So the four drives should show up. Let's take a look under advanced mode. 
on the right side clicked on advanced we are going to go over to settings and we're going to look at let's just double check IO ports okay IO ports we've got everything is set for auto I thought maybe let us see the four drives the only thing we have is IO ports and if you notice it says bifurcation is all auto and the boot sequence shows the boot drive Ah, there's a two terabyte drive it sees boot sequence does see one of the drives that's what I wanted to find out we see the original boot drive which is the four terabyte drive and we see the one of the secondary drives which is a two terabyte drive that'd be the first drive it sees I'm gonna double click on that and see if it sees any of the other drives no it just sees the first one on the card two terabyte so I think what we need to do now is we looked in the BIOS I wanted to see if it see the four drives it does not boot into the operating system windows see if it sees the four drives and it won't see them until we go to disk management so when we get into windows we'll go to the control panel when we click on that it's going to want to initialize the drives we're going to go ahead and do that so we can see the drives but this is just a simple proof of concept here's the card here's the four drives that's what we're doing in this video if we do raid it'll be a separate video we're trying to get the platform so we can get up to get onto the next one which is Thunderbolt 3 so let's go into Windows so let's do a save and exit we'll say yes we're going to go into disk management control panel administrative tools and we will go to computer management and when computer management initializes we should see a dialog box pop up when we click on disk management and there it is initialize disk now this step I always like to show but I can only show it one time because it only works with new disks once a disk has been initialized I can't show it again so cards installed four drives are on there and it sees the disk by whatever number it says disk 3 and it should go through the process of seeing all four of the drives let's step through it and see what we've got and the default is going to be for a GPT on a new machine that's the way to go we don't want to do MBR that's another conversation so we're going to say GPT we're going to say OK and let's see the numbers on the disks so we have the internal drive E we have another internal drive which is F we have a C drive and there's one disk that was seen okay we're not seeing all four drives so what we need to do is go back into the BIOS and set that manually that's what I wanted to find out and that's what we're seeing um, even though this is supposed to be automatically set because of the BIOS version which they've got to deal with and they've got to get that fixed we need to go in and manually tell that card and bifurcate it it's not automatically doing it that requires a BIOS update so we see one drive that's what we want to find out for those that have bought the card that's what the problem is so let's go see if solving that problem by this solution works if it doesn't only way it's going to be solved is with a BIOS update let's go find out go back into the BIOS and reboot and fix this so we're going to restart so while this is coming back up I'll be ready on the keyboard and press the delete key and into the BIOS we go we saw one drive but my expectation was it was only seeing the one for whatever reason I expected to see all four of them and I didn't so now we'll go back into the BIOS manually bifurcate the slot that'll get solved with the BIOS update I don't know about you guys but you know this new technology is fascinating stuff it helps because we have a history since we've worked with the X399 for an expectation there we go we beep and as soon as we come up on screen going with the delete key back in the BIOS now let's go uh, let's go bifurcate okay we will go to settings IO ports and we will select the second slot where it says PCI Express by 16 underscore 2 bifurcation auto we're going to press enter and instead of auto or by 16 or by 8 by 8 we're going to select by 4 by 4 by 4 by 4 we'll reboot the computer and come back to the BIOS let's see if this solves our problem simple maybe we'll find out nothing ventured nothing gained okay so we'll press escape and, it note, and you'll notice here it's one thing I like about the BIOS it shows here last modification that modification has been set but it needs to be saved so we're going to say no we're going to save and exit now the other way to get to save and exit would be to press F10 which still works save configuration and exit and we'll say yes so while we're waiting on this thing to come back up as soon as it reboots BIOS has got a post we'll go back in and take a look at it now this time around we should see all four drives if we don't we'll go into Windows and see if Windows sees the four drives okay we're getting close boy this thing takes a long time to boot kind of leaves you on needles there we go I heard the code I love that speaker on there okay I got a screen up into the BIOS let's take a look now back into the BIOS let's look at settings IO ports it shows it's set correctly I want to take a look at SATA configuration still the same 
double click on settings, miscellaneous. Let's go to system info. Let's look at boot. There we are. Now, so what we had to do is come into the BIOS, go to settings, IO ports. We'd see the slot the way it's correctly configured. Then we'll go over here to boot. There's our four drives. So, wow. For the folks that bought that card by itself and it didn't work for them and uh, Gigabyte did not help them any, that requires a BIOS update because PCI Express 4 is supposed to do that automatically. It does not with this BIOS. But we have to keep this BIOS because this is crucial as we go to Thunderbolt 3. Thunderbolt 3 will work with this BIOS. So it's kind of like this. And for people who say, well, I want something more stable. This is cutting edge technology, but the BIOS is bleeding edge technology. And again, if you want to reiterate that BIOS that you can get directly from Gigabyte, I would call that alpha technology. I wouldn't do an alpha BIOS. So um, what we had to do was to reiterate this. Changes from auto to manually bifurcate it, which was by 4x4x4x4. Four by four by four by four. Once we manually set that and hardwired that, when the system rebooted, now we see all four drives under the boot menu, which means Windows sees the controller, Windows sees the drives, and it sees all the drives, all four of them individually. So now that the hardware sees all four drives, the operating system is going to see all four drives. So we're going to go back into the operating system, and we're going to finish initializing those other three disks, so we'll have four to initialize. Then we'll format them, we'll have four disks. Let's do this. So we know that works, so we will press F10. We will save configuration and exit. So while the machine's booting, it's just, it's just us. So for those on Amazon that you read about that have one of these cards, uh, that all they needed to do is go in the BIOS and uh, set the configuration. Folks, we are our own best tech support. When you have a problem, it always helps if you're doing things methodically, and there's a good example why. You, you've got to build a foundation that you know everything is set, so when something gets wonky, you've got something you can go back to without having to go all the way back down to the bottom. So as the machine comes back up, we should be good to go. We'll get back into Windows. This is Windows 10 Pro, build 2004. We'll go to Control Panel and go to Disk Management. Okay, Windows is back up. We'll go to Control Panel, Administrative Tools, Computer Management, and when we click on Disk Management, double click, we should get a dialog box, and there it is, Initialize. There's three disks. And remember, this is a one-time procedure. Once we've done this, we can't go back and do it. We are initializing the disks. And again, if you've got a disk that you don't see this process, somebody else has installed it. And if you can't see the disk in Windows, check the BIOS. If the BIOS doesn't see it, you're not going to see it in Windows. But if the BIOS does see it and you can't see it in Windows, then you've got two paths to go. One, uh, the mini disk tools. Well, I'll put a link up to it. Or number two, a version of Linux. Let's do this. So we've initialized the first disk. Now we'll initialize the other three. And that'll do that all in one shot. We'll say OK. And we now have those four drives. Disk 3, Disk 4, Disk 5, and Disk 6. Now we have to go individually and create a new simple volume. This is the point at which we would do a software rate if we chose to. Once we've done the first step, this is the second step. So instead of doing the individual disks, we could do a software rate. About, again, to keep it simple, I'll do the individual disk 1, 2, 3, and 4. But I've got to tell you, anybody doing four of these drives, I would think you would want to uh, aggregate, bring them together. Okay, we'll do individual drives, because I've had the question before. Can I just do that? Yes, you can. So to keep it simple, we're going to format each drive. So all we want to do is a simple volume. We'll do this four times. Brings up a dialog box for the wizard for a simple volume. We're going to go to the maximum capacity. It shows the minimum size. Drive letter, I don't care. I can reassign it. I'm not worried about that. I'm going to go NTFS. And I'm going to call this so I know the labels. And I'll call this NVMe uh, underscore 1. That's just so that we'll know what we're doing. Keep it simple. Because when we get all four of these set, we're going to bring up Explore and uh, take a look at all four drives. Now, once we get each drive formatted, each drive will automatically pop up and show that that disk is ready to be used in a Windows Explorer. So it'll be like in your face. Okay, NVMe underscore 1. Next. And this is a list of the details of what it's going to do and how it's going to do it. And we're doing a quick format, so we're going to say finish. Another box will pop up, and there it is. And if you notice the label up here at the top, it says NVMe underscore 1. That's the drive we just set, and that drive is now ready. So if I clicked on this PC, there's that first drive. Pretty nice. And when we get through the other three drives, same thing. I'll close that. We'll go back over here. 
NVMe1 is set. We'll take number two, right click, do a simple volume, click on that, and again the little wizard pops up. Next, choose the size, we want the total capacity. Next, it'll give it a drive letter, we can reassign it later. And only thing I'm going to do is change the volume. This will be NVMe underscore NVMe underscore two. And it'll be a quick format. And by the time we get finished, a box will pop up. A box will pop up saying I am, I am available. And there it is. Disk number two. Close that. Let's go to number three. Right click. Simple volume. Wizard pops up. Next. Specify the volume size. Full capacity. Again, it'll assign a drive letter. And we're going to call this one NVMe underscore three. Quick format. Next. It gives us the list. We say finish. By the time it finishes, there's the drive. Drive number three. We'll close that one. One drive left to do. Unallocated. And out of uh, two terabytes, it shows the capacity. 1863. So we'll right click. New span volume. And it, let me cancel that. If you'll notice, all the other options for volumes are grayed out now because we only got one drive left. We cannot span. We cannot stripe. We cannot mirror. And we cannot create a RAID 5 volume. All we can do is a simple volume because the others are taken, occupied, not available. So welcome to the new Simple Volume Wizard. This wizard will help you to create a simple volume on a disk. A simple volume can only be used on a single disk. We'll click on Next, Full Capacity. We'll click on Next, Drive Letters Assigned. We'll click on Next, and this will be number four. NVM, NVME underscore four. Next, the full list of what it's getting ready to do, and we're going to say Finish. And by the time we finish, it pops up and there it is. Okay, I will close that, and we have right there, one, two, three, and four. Four drives. How do you like them apples? Cool, huh? Okay, cards installed, BIOS is correctly configured, Windows sees it, we got four drives, four partitions, ready to be used, however you want to use it. And if you want to aggregate them, that's what RAID's about. So we'll zoom out of that, and I will close all those screens. We don't need to see that again. And I will do a Windows flag E, and we will take a look down here on the left, this PC. And when I click on that, there's our drives. Now, that's the boot drive of four terabytes. That's an NVMe drive. There's a Blu-ray drive in here. There's an internal data drive of letter E. And this is the offload drive that I use to um, pull the data and remove it, store it, whatever. And now it shows up these other four drives that are all NVMe. Number one, number two, number three, and number four. So what we've done is we've installed the card, we've gone into the BIOS, we've configured it correctly, and it had to be manually set for bifurcation. Anybody that's bought the card and the card didn't see but one drive, bifurcation was the key. The BIOS is supposed to automatically set that. It's part of the PCI Express 4.0. It's not working yet. Well, it's a work in progress. You know how to set it. Go into the BIOS and set it. So now we've got four drives. We can go one of two ways. Hybrid RAID BIOS or a software RAID the operating system in Windows. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. We'll look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Coming up, we're going to be doing Thunderbolt 3. This is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. Please subscribe. We are out.